If you've got some horsepower under the hood of your computer and you've got a decent internet connection, this plugin will allow you to live stream to YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitch all at the same time at no cost to you. We will review the settings and whether or not this plugin is a candidate for your usage. Let's get some. Electrify your online presence with live, live streaming. streaming. If you have a Ryzen 5, 7, 9, or the Threadripper, you're good to go. If you have an i5, a Intel i7, or i9, again, you are solid. But if you have an older CPU, like a 3 or below for both Ryzen and Intel, you could run into some potential issues. It's going to require more testing. I'm simply drawing a line in the sand here just to give you a benchmark to see where you are in regards to what I think would give you trouble with this plugin. So if you have an older CPU, you could make adjustments to resolution, frame rate, and ultimately the bit rate to connect the dots and make this thing work for you. So if you have an older chip, it's gonna take a little bit more extra adjustment and experimentation to make it work for you. What is bitrate? It's really nothing super confusing. It's just the amount of data being sent down a wire over time. It's measured in kilobits per second, okay? Let's pretend that you are connecting to Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook, and each one of them require 10,000 kilobits per second. So that means you're sending to three venues and you need to add all three to get the total kilobits per second that you're sending out from your computer. That would give you 30,000 kilobits. That means that you need 60,000 kilobits to send 30. And the reason why is you need a ceiling to handle the variable output. So in other words, when you're sending kilobits down the wire, it's a variable. It's kind of like a hose where the water comes out in spurts, sometimes it blasts out of the hose, sometimes it drips out of the hose. It's a variable output. And so in order to accommodate that variable, you need to have a ceiling. So if you're at 30,000 kilobytes as a requirement, you need 60 to handle it safely. So conduct a speed test and discern whether or not you have enough upload kilobytes per second to handle the requirements for the three venues. Now, luckily they don't all require 10,000 kilobytes, thank God. So I just wanna make sure that if you do your speed test and you're around 100,000 kilobits per second, you are solid. There's the line in the sand. If you do your speed test and you're coming in at 30, 40, 50, 60 kilobits per second, that could be an issue. And again, you're gonna to have to circle the wagons and make adjustments to video resolution and frame rate to accommodate the lesser speeds or the lesser upload kilobits per second so that you're still safe and you still have the ceiling to accommodate the required bit rates. Okay, let's install the multiple RTMP outputs plugin for OBS Studio. Link is in the description. When you get here, you'll see a go to download button in the upper right hand corner. Click it, it takes you to GitHub. Ah, here we have an exe file. We got a zip file and a PKG, I guess for uh, Mac users, which is good news. I'm going to Click and download the .exe file to my downloads folder. Oh, Ooh, we got a generic MLPUA detected in my C drive. Right after doing that, I'm gonna hit close and cancel. Ooh, we got another one, MLPUA detected. This is Sophos now, this is no joke. So it's coming up with viruses. I don't know if it's valid, it could be a false positive but I am not going to download the exe file. I will download the zip file to my computer, save it, and we'll scan it from there with, with Sophos to see if the zip file contains anything dangerous. Let's get in there right away. Here we go, I will scan it, and I'll tell you what's going on. Here we go, scan with Sophos Home. Coast is clear. Okay, so there may be something going on with the EXE file. I don't recommend that you download the EXE for fear that there could be a virus in there. Just want to let you know, just an FYI. Okay, upon downloading the zip file, expand it. In this case, the folder is named OBS-Multi-RTMP-Portable. Open up that folder. You should have a data and an OBS-Plugins folder. Copy those two folders, go into your program file folder, and then look for OBS-Studio and paste it right in there. 
you may have to have admin permissions to copy it. Just hit continue and you're done. Now, when restarting OBS, you should see a doc named multiple output placed somewhere inside your OBS. You may adjust it. If you don't see anything, I'll click X here. If you don't see that doc show up on your interface, go to view docs and sub choice multiple output. And that's what it looks like right there. You should see an add new target button that will allow you to do the next step. At first glance, this plugin is pretty exciting because when you click the add new target, which is how it's asking for the parameters for each connection to each venue, uh, you, there is no limit to the amount of venues that you can connect to. I can just keep on clicking add new target here and literally have an unlimited amount of connections, which is incredible. Now, before I start connecting, I'm gonna wanna run a speed test so I can see how much uh, bit rate I can assign to this plugin. So I'm gonna go into YouTube here and run a speed test. And I wanna let you know, I've got fiber to the home, but there, I'm sure there's gonna be some of you out there who have coax, who are using your cable company to connect to the internet. And that technology means that you're sharing bandwidth with all the other users who are also connected to your network in your area to the internet. So you're going to have different speed test results based on the time of day or based how many people are also on the internet when you're on the internet. So I recommend that you run the test morning, afternoon, and night and get a running average. That'll be a more accurate result to your speed test. In my case, my network system is sort of resilient to that. It doesn't matter who's on the network at the time I run the test because it really doesn't matter. In my case, I have roughly 109,000 kilobits per second. That's not bad. That means I can only go up to 50,000 kilobits roughly when I'm connecting on the venues and they have all their required bit rates. I cannot exceed when I add them all up 50,000 kilobits per second. All right, let's talk about settings for all three venues. So if I click add new target, the stream settings window pops up. And as you can see in the video settings, it's wanting to grab the settings from OBS as a default. So it would make sense to discern what settings are the same for all three venues and just add them into the settings at OBS. And then it makes your life super easy. So I've done some homework for you. Check out this graphic. It isolates all the parameters for all three and isolates which ones are different. And there's only two. One is the bit rate for Twitch at 4,500 kilobits per second. And then Facebook is looking for B frames set at three. So in regards to the bit rate for Twitch, 4,500 is within the acceptable range of Facebook and YouTube. So we'll just use 4,500 across the board. That solves that problem. And then I'll show you how to change the B-frames independently when setting up the settings for Facebook. Here we go. All right, homie, click add new target and then name it Facebook because these settings will be unique to Facebook. Uh, add your RTM P server, add your RTM key. I'm assuming you know where to go to get that information. Then when you get down to video settings next to encoder, you wanna select H.264 new, NVIC new. That's assuming you have a 10 series or higher card. As soon as you do that, you get this message at the bottom. It's like, woo, 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 woo. worry, worry, standalone encoder calls for more CPU power. <laughs> so I hope you have a half decent CPU based on the earlier conversation we had in this video. Just be aware that when you select unique settings for each venue, your CPU will be taxed a little bit extra. The bit rate as discussed was 4,500. Keyframes is two. I didn't put this in the graphic, by the way. I believe keyframes is the same for all venues. Keyframes every two seconds. And then of course, B frames for Facebook is unique at three. Now let's move on to the settings for all the venues in OBS. So we'll dig into that next real quick. Okay, let's go into OBS settings by clicking the button in the lower right hand corner. We will select video. And as you can see, my base canvas resolution, which is the resolution I see on my end on my computer is set to 1080p. The output scaled resolution is the same size. In other words, when the video is being sent out from my computer, I'm not changing the size because I don't want to tax my system more than I need to. So what I see and what I send is the same size. The frames per second, of course, is set to 30. And if we go into output, make sure that I'm in the advanced output mode. I wanna make sure I select NVIC new, right? Because I got a 10 series card or higher. My rate control is CBR. My bit rate is 4,500 kilobits per second. Keyframe interval set to two. 
Currently, I have my preset set to max quality. This is where a little bit of an experimentation should occur for you. But being that my system's pretty good, I keep it at max quality, profile set to high. Uh, I checked off psycho visual tuning, but I'm going to uncheck that because I just, some of the venues use it, some of them don't. I just want to keep it simple and uncheck it. And the max B frames is set to two. I'll hit apply and OK, and I'm good. Now, I've heard one thing that pops up from time to time out there, people are complaining that when they shut down OBS, all the settings that they've set up in their targets here get lost. So before you shut down OBS, go into each one of your target settings and change the name. So I'm just going to put SEF here. Hit OK. And I'll just type uh, YouTube here. Hit OK. So basically what that does is it resaves the settings. If you shut down OBS without doing that, you may lose the settings based on what I'm reading on the forums, okay? Now, if you're interested, I have a fantastic set of videos that discusses an absolute game-changing plugin called Move Transitions by Exeldro. Click this video right here and it will summarize all kinds of cool functionality like moving sources from scene to scene, moving sources independently with hotkey, and actually applying a music visualizing capability with the plugin as well. It's absolutely incredible. I can't wait to see you over there. Regardless, best wishes to you. Stay strong and keep fighting.